She's one of my favorites. She's absolutely brilliant. Make her really welcome, June Horton! Hello. Good evening. I like to live on the edge a bit. Sometimes I call out bingo and my card's not even full. Oh, what a thrill that is. But they got to know me with that one. So I had to look for some other ways to get my kicks. Well, that's when I thought I'd have a go at this stand-up comedy. Well, let me tell you, it's really scary getting up here and doing this stuff. And you have to have rocks in your head to start doing it at my age. <laughs> well, let me tell you what happens. You're waiting out there in the wings somewhere. You're just about to come up here on the stage and do your bit. And you have to cope with first your inhibitions, then your insecurity, and finally, you're incontinence. <laughs> so there you go. I peed myself already. <laughs> and I haven't even had a drink yet. And it doesn't help any when all your friends put you down. They keep telling me, you'll never make it. You're too old. Well, I haven't made it in years. <laughs> and as for the too old bit, I don't need them to remind me of that. I mean, you know you're old when you wake up in the morning and the bird chirping outside your bedroom window is a vulture. <laughs> take this 73 year old guy along with you to the party and they call you a cougar <laughs> and you've got both arthritis and Alzheimer's and you know it hurts but you can't remember where <laughs> and everything on your body drops so that you spend all your time in every clinic on the Gold Coast getting it all lifted back up again. <laughs> well, I had to. They found this lump under the left breast and it turned out to be water on the knee. <laughs> But the trouble was they lifted them up so far that then I couldn't find my belly button. I was looking for it again the other day and I thought I found it. But when I looked into it, it was too big. And it needed a shade. Then I knew it had tricked me because it winked at me. <laughs> I even said to the doctors when they lifted the boobs up, look, while you're at it, what about the face? And they said, listen, dear, if we lift that face just one more time, you'll be needing a Brazilian. <laughs> I know I've had a lot of work done. I bet anything when I die and go to heaven, God's not going to recognise me. Well, there's no two parts of my body the same age. And what about all those hot flushes? Oh, mine went on for so long, I was convinced that global warming was all my fault. I tell you girls, you go through puberty, they tell you you're becoming a woman. You go through change of life, nobody tells you what's happening. Well, let me tell you what I think. I think I'm becoming my father. <laughs> and you know something else that I wanted to talk about? I'm really worried and upset with all these kids the way they're going on today. They're completely out of control. I think they've fallen off the tracks and they're all heading in the wrong direction. 
Mind you, my daughter was no different. Oh, did I have some problems with her. When she was a little tot about this big, she was so cute. She used to run up to me all the time and she'd say, Mummy, when I grow up, I'm going to be just like you. And out of the corner of my eye, I could see my husband going. <laughs> well, next thing I knew, she's 15. Rude, arrogant, and full of attitude. We used to fight all the time. She'd say to me, so, why did you have me? And I'd tell her, well, actually, dear, I didn't know it was going to be you. <laughs> I was hoping to get someone with a job. <laughs> well, that's about the time she took herself off to university, decided she wanted to be a rocket scientist. Stayed six months, came back with running bear and a safety pin through her eyebrow. I didn't even know your eyebrow could fall off. <laughs> Next thing I know, she's pregnant. Well, that was the end of Running Bear, wasn't it? <laughs> he did his thing, left me with it. I was there when she dropped the twins. I said to her, keep the one with the blue eyes. <laughs> Not her. She had to have the two of them, didn't she? And that was just the beginning. Five sets followed after that. So now I've got all these grandkids. Little bastards. <laughs> you take them to the beach for the day and all they want to do is play snakes and ladders on the veins on your legs. <laughs> That's why I still take the pill. I don't want any more grandkids. <laughs> blame the kids. It's not their fault. I mean, like I said, the parents don't cull them out in the beginning. <laughs> and the doctors, what about the doctors? They know. They see them coming out. They can tell when they're feral. <laughs> Should be giving them a bloody good hit on the head instead of a little slap on the body. <laughs> Next thing, they're sending them off to the kindergarten. Well, that's where they learn to spit and swear and kick and, and oh, don't forget mummies and daddies and doctors and nurses. <laughs> and if they haven't had enough sex by that time, they send them off to the primary school. <laughs> well, you know what they're doing there now, don't you? They're teaching them all about sex in the primary school. Their version of a, their definition, I should say, of a virgin these days is an ugly kid in the third grade. <laughs> what chance have they got? No, like I said, you can't blame the kids. You can blame the mums and the dads and the doctors. Oh, as far as the doctors are concerned, the best thing you can hope for there is to stay away from them. I'll never forget last winter. Oh, I was so sick. I had the flu. I don't know if it was the bird flu or the pig flu or the horse flu, because I was as sick as a dog. <laughs> I staggered into the nearest medical centre. Well, you should have seen them run. You know, nothing clears that waiting room so fast as when they think you're going to cark it right there in front then in front of them. Well, I sat there for three quarters of an hour pinching myself, didn't I? You wouldn't want to fall asleep. You'd wake up minus a kidney or a liver or something. Well, they're so, so short of spare parts. Anyway, eventually the doctor called me in. He said, have you got a rash? I said, no. He said, have you got any running sores? I said, no. He said, have you got herpes? I said, no. He said, well, what are you doing Friday? <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was so excited. I haven't been out on a 
day for years. So I raced out, bought the most beautiful dress I could find. Cost me an arm and a leg, but I don't care. Didn't worry me, it was going to be the night of nights. So 7.30 Friday night he turned up, chauffeur driven limousine, champagne in the limo, took me to the best restaurant. Oh, I had caviar, chicken, lobster, more champagne, everything, anything I wanted. Then he took me home. Well, he turned into an animal, didn't he? <laughs> Tore my dress off me, ripped it to shreds. Then he tried to get my pantyhose off over my head. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> and that really upset me. <laughs> because at my age, I try to keep myself nice. <laughs> well. I did for nine years, keep my pantyhose on, I mean. <laughs> for nine years they all thought I was a virgin. <laughs> but I had to remember to say, ouch. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I won't do that again, will I? I learned my lesson. Next time I'll just wear an old dress. Thank you.